listening to The Dating Den with dating and relationship badass and best-selling author Marnie Batista. Every week, you'll get the raw truth from top experts and real people on the important dating, sex, and relationship issues you want to know about. So if you're ready for true talk that's authentic and unfiltered, and you're not afraid to be called out on your <clears throat> stuff, then you're ready for what's next. Welcome to The Dating Den, episode 87 with Kane Quarter. Money and love mixed down. Is your money personality the reason why you're still single? Ladies, welcome into my beautiful dating den. It is a beautiful day here in Los Angeles, California. Um, I'm not really sweating that much, so it's been a heat wave, so that's really good. So today, uh, I have invited my dream my dream guest into the dating den. So for those of you who don't know, I am a podcast listener. I feel like, how could you do a podcast and not listen to podcasts? That would be weird. So I was doing my little, like, you know, podcast thing. I traveled a lot, lots of downtime. And I came across my next guest here today, Kane Quarter, and she talks about money and love and money in relationships. And I thought, oh my goodness, we all need to learn this, me included. So let me tell you a little about Kane. She is a best selling author, she's an international speaker, and she does psychotherapy specializing in what she calls financial therapy. It's amazing because, in fact, money is the number one reason couples get divorced. She started out in the financial services industry like 20 years ago, and she worked with companies like Ameriprise Financial and New York Life and Morgan Stanley. And before entering the financial world, she was a spokesperson for ABC's Extreme Makeover show. She's in magazines, too, like Elle and Marie Claire and People and... She has been on TV shows like Good Morning America, Entertainment Tonight, The E! Channel, and Oprah, which is, like, amazing. Um, and she most recently started Presidential Lifestyle, which is a wellness company that's focused on wealth in all of its forms. And I love the motto at Presidential Lifestyle, which we're going to talk about on the show, is money can buy happiness if you know what truly brings you happy. And the mission there is to help couples become a winning team in love, life, and money. And she has a library of resources called the Prosperity Club. So through that, she helps members shift their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors to reach their true heart's desire, which is what we what we all want. So uh, she's really dedicated her life to relieving the pain in the world. And she does it, you know, through coaching courses, speaking engagements, and showing up here uh, in the morning to talk about love. And money. So, Kane, welcome into the den. Ah, thank you. Thank you for having me. I so feel like my best friend would be so jealous right now because you just said that like we've been friends for 20 years. <laughs> well, I just feel I, you know, like I heard you and I just feel like this is a topic, honestly, like I would say one of the things that my husband and I have had challenges around for the last 10 years is money. And it's because we both started out. I say broke AF, which is like <laughs> broke as fuck. And we bonded on it. We're like, let's go to dinner and we'll share, you know, share a side salad. Ooh, you know, it was like we we did that. And then, you know, that is our, right? so romantic. Yeah, so romantic. And we were, were really resourceful together, you know. Um, and then, you know, I started my business and, you know, he was doing his thing in his career and you know, things really changed for us. And so as I was up leveling and he was still trying to figure out what he wanted to be when he grew up um, it, and I was working on my money mindset, it was like this huge disparity started to happen in our money mindset. And so I just think that this is like such an important topic, especially for women today where roles are confused and it's we don't have any like blueprints. So we got Kine. So that's why you're here. Yay, exactly. That is why I am alive. I know. I love that. So, okay. So let's talk, let's just first talk about your overall philosophy, which is this concept that money can buy happiness. So let's start there. Explain what you mean by that. So I love this topic because it's kind of controversial and society has told us money can't buy happiness. So it's my philosophy that that person was clearly broke. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that was just an excuse as why they aren't wealthy. 
Because the truth is everything that we want, need, you know, there's a dollar sign associated with most of the things that have to do with our ideas of prosperity. So money can buy happiness, but here's the thing. You might want to invest some of it in financial therapy so that you can determine what truly brings you happiness and then go out and get it. Yeah, well, that's and that's really huge because once my husband and I started talking about our common values, we realized we have those in common. Duh. I mean, that's why we're together. I did get that part right. I did follow my own advice. Um, Right. But like that's a conversation that a lot of people don't really have. So like what are so what are most people struggling with if they live by the, you know, money can't buy me happiness sort of motto? Or are they just trying to bullshit themselves? But you can't because it really is true. Yep. Is that right there? So what happens is there's this cognitive dissonance. There's this conflict that you're having like, oh, money can't buy happiness. And then inside you're like, oh, I really hope it can. Please, please, please buy some happiness because I'm really chasing this money. But then again, money can't buy happiness. And we don't need money. And the money is not important. So they're saying all these things out of their mouths. But then their gut is saying, but let's still go get it and maybe find out for ourselves and prove the world wrong. And so that fight, that conflict that they're having inside of them won't allow them to find peace. And so even if they get the money, because they're so confused and they're messaging what I call their programming is set in place, even if they get the money, they'll just buy things that don't make them happy to prove society right. That's so deep. So let me ask you this. So we work with a lot of ambitious women here, you know, and they are very focused on creating success in their professional life. Um, Mm -hmm. Sometimes it becomes a hiding place to avoid the pain Mm -hmm. of their love life. Um, Sometimes that's where they get their validation. But there's a a big dissonance really, you know, between how how, can I have it all? Um, So how how do women find that balance between, you know, having success in their love life and their professional life? Oh, gosh, how much time do we have? I know, right? (laughs) Okay, okay. Okay, let me start first by saying this. You can have it all, but not at the same time. And I find it really important to say that to my women, especially. Men, I say that too as well, but especially my women, because I think that there is this idea out again in society that you can have it all. And, you know, people are telling you that you can do it all. You can fall in love. You can have the business. You can have a baby. You can blah, blah, blah. you can juggle all these things. Sure, you can. But I want you to understand if you are leaning in to your profession, then you are leaning away from something. There is it's like physics, basically. Right. Yeah. So but just understand how far you want to lean, how far away From love, do you want to lean towards your profession and don't get so don't lean so far that you tip over. Right. And get so far away from love that you can't get back up. So have a measurement. And I have a friend. Many of my friends are ambitious. And one of my friends, we hold each other accountable to stop. You know how you have friends that motivate you to go? Yep. Well, <laughs> we're, not, we're not like that. We're, we're activated. I have this saying that we go to sleep motivated and wake up activated. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we don't need to motivate each other or activate each other. What we need to do is to, to pause. Like, hey girl, you, you're you knocking it out the park. You've, de- you've done it. You hit your goal. Now go do something with your man. Like go kiss that man, go hug that man, go that man. Yeah, you know? no, yes. no, to- totally, totally. And here's what's interesting. So, so then if you, you, lean so far into you, your work that you tip over mm-hmm. um what because there's this thing of like well if i don't keep achieving then is my like what what's my self worth do you know what i mean so like yes. how, how do you how do you pivot right so i have this um independent woman versus responsible woman 
theory that I throw out there to my women who are super ambitious. Now, I'm an ambitious woman, too, and my man knows it. He's like, when we started dating, he's like, you're kind of a big deal, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, I am. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I thought that was so cute. Like, that was one of the things that made me fall in love with him is that he didn't get in my way. He was like, go do that thing you do. However, know that my love language is quality time. So now that you know that, what are you going to do about it? It's basically not like he gave me an ultimatum, but just like, here's the information you need in order to make the decisions that you need to make. So I felt like at one point I wanted to be that independent woman. And what I found when I was the independent woman, I was pushing men away. I was saying, I don't need a man. I'm good. And so at the end, I would, somebody I was dating would end up in a relationship and I'm like, well, what, what about me? They were like, oh, I didn't know you wanted to be in a relationship. I thought you wanted to be the independent woman. And I was like, oh, but I thought you liked the independent woman. And they were like, well, I, I do. I just like to watch the independent woman. I don't want to marry the independent woman. Right. <laughs> That's so deep. Like, oh, like rewind, hit it again, take a note. Yeah, they want to watch. They're intrigued. But like, that's not who I want to share my life with. Exactly. Men want to share their life with responsible women. They don't want you to be the woman who's going to come to the relationship with bad credit, a bunch of debt and a shopping habit. They want you to come to the relationship with a plan, you know, and 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 good credit and 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 a way to support them to reach their goals, because although they want you to have your goals. They really, truly want you to support them and their goals. And that's not, that's just the way their brains are wired. That's so deep. I was just thinking like, even the reverse is true, right? Because women that I work with, or some of them get really caught up in, you know, I want a man who makes this amount of money. And if mm. he doesn't, then, you know, I, my older ladies say, I don't want to be a nurse in a purse. Um, <laughs> You know, but what I hear you saying of the reverse is true is that you you don't have to have a guy necessarily who's who's got, you know, X amount of dollars in the bank or in his retirement fund. But you want a man who's responsible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because what happens is if there could be a man who doesn't have a clear idea of what his idea of prosperity is, maybe because of his old programming. Maybe his parents spent money when they got it. We get money, we spend it. We get money, we spend it. That's all he knows is what his caretakers taught him. But if he gets into a relationship with you and your parents were savers, then your money mentality and his money mentality can then become what I call the marriage money mission. If you blend those two together, because there is a place for spending money and there is a place for saving money. I say that the money cycle is earn, grow, protect, gift, and enjoy your money. And how you navigate the money cycle is going to determine your lifestyle. But you've got to do all five of those things in order to really create your idea of prosperity. That's so amazing. I I love you. Uh, so let's talk. First of all, you're already coming back because we could talk for like three hours. But uh, so let's so let's talk about um, discovering your money personality. Because when I work with women, I have them come up with like their deal breakers, you know. And and there's mm-hmm. always, well, not always, often there is one around money. So knowing your own money personality can impact, you know, how you choose a man or how you create intimacy in your relationship. So what is, what is your money personality and how can it benefit that, that objective? Absolutely. So the money personality, or I call them your money mentality and your money mentality is basically your money personality and your money personality is your relationship with money. So this is a relationship podcast. And one of the relationships that you have to get right first before going into a relationship with a man or woman is to get your money relationship right. And the first way you do that is to understand how you handle money. 
And so for some people, that's spending, right? And the saver. We know the spender and the saver, but there are other money mentalities. There is the blamer, and that is somebody who does not take responsibility. And then there is the enthusiast, and that's the person who's going to like buy the bar. And you talked about validation. For an enthusiast, having money is how they show up. That's 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 their identity is around them having money. And then who who are they without money? And then there's the hero. The hero is the one who's always saving everybody, who is going to help somebody pay their rent or their mortgage. A lot of times men are heroes, but there are a lot of female heroes too, especially if you're the most successful person in your circle, then you have that survivor's remorse and you feel guilty and you feel like you got to give, give, give in order to feel worthy, like, okay, well, I'm keeping it real. I'm staying close to the family because your money mentality also talks about how you receive love because love and money go very close together. They go hand in hand and how you handle money is usually connected to how you give and receive love. And so there are two more and that's the artist and then what I call the president and the president is the ideal money mentality. And they have this harmony between how to give, how to receive, how to earn, how to grow, how to protect and enjoy money all together. And so you really want to strive to become the president, but we all start out somewhere because our money programs are put in place before age three, like 75 to 85% of our money beliefs are in place by age three. Now that's also true about our love beliefs. They are in place between, before age three. So from zero to three years old, our brains are interpreting, but we're really not great interpreters at three years old. Definitely not. <laughs> so we have all of these maladaptive ideas, like they, they're, they're not serving us well, but we don't know how to change them because they're so deeply rooted and imprinted because our parents and then the grandparents and then society and all of these messages got imprinted into our um, personality and then they play out in our everyday. And that's why we say, I know better, but I just don't know how to do better. Like, I know I shouldn't go shopping every weekend, but I can't stop myself. That's why we do that because it's imprinted and the brain goes towards familiar, not towards unfamiliar. So, so if so what's your philosophy on this? So if you are aspiring to the president, mm -hmm. um, do you feel like you have to have a guy who's there at the mm. same level that you are? Like if you're a saver, you need to meet a saver. If you're a spender right now, you need to have a spender or like, how does that work? Because I know obviously that can be the source of conflict, but also being the president and finding a president might be kind of challenging. <laughs> exactly. I'm so glad you brought that up. So a lot of times, if you have the same money mentality, like even two savers, then you're not going to navigate the money cycle properly. It's going to be two people stuck in saving mode and not looking at how to enjoy money. And savers are not necessarily good earners. They are just good at saving. And um, I had a, I had a client once and she was, oh, I got to got to I got to have a guy with six figures, six figures. I don't know what it was about six figures, but that was her thing. He's got to have six figures or more or she can be in a relationship with him. And I was like, OK, that makes no sense, because just because he has six figures, he could be spending that or more. Right. right. So why is that the marker? Um, how about if you shift to what you want his values to be, like what you talked about earlier? What do you want your values to be? What do you want his values to be around money? So maybe you want him to be generous with money. Maybe you want him to be conscientious about money. Go to the values, not necessarily the dollar signs, because the dollar signs come and go. Trust me, I know. I, I ran a business in 2004 to 2008 that crashed when the market crashed mm. and money was easy. It was flowing in. I was like, woohoo, giving it away. Like, hey, you need some, you need some. And then bam, the market crashed. And I was like, whoa, where are my dollar signs? Right, right. It does, it, so that's really deep because it 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 is something that does come and go, but the value is the the constant. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's amazing. And, 
And that if you can get attached to that idea rather than the idea of six figures. And the funny thing is this, this client that I'm even talking about, she did it marry any, somebody who made six figures. He made a lot less than six figures, but he was really good at managing his money. He just didn't have extravagant taste. So he could live like somebody who had six figures because even though he was making $60,000 a year, he didn't have a bunch of bills and a bunch of debt. He owned his home outright. And so he actually had a net worth, not necessarily a paycheck that was, you know, a, a attractive. That's so important. And by the way, just if I can say, that is stuff that you do not find out on the first date or that you can tell from somebody's profile, by the uh, way, right? Like to really get to know somebody's values and where they are, which is why I make all of you go out on at least three dates. I mean, to yes. have that have that bigger conversation because um, you got to get to know what someone's values are. That's Absolutely. And be open to having the conversation. But let me say this, because a lot of times women feel like, oh, I don't want to waste my time. I get you don't want to waste your time. I wouldn't want you to waste your time, but I want you to take your time. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's that's brilliant. So so let so I want to ask you the, the, the million dollar question. So you're on a date, you're on the second date, you're on the third date and you I have a client that's been dating a guy for over a year and he's successful. I mean, he looks successful. He's got a profession. Um, they're in there. He's maybe in his late fifties. She's in her forties. She's a, a physician and they've never, and they're getting ready to move in together even right. And buy property. And she's like, we, I really have no idea if this guy has like savings. I, I literally don't know. So at what point in the relationship do you think you have that conversation and how do you bring it up? Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. So it, it has to start really early yep. and it starts with you dropping little questions here, there, like on the second or third date, for example, I, I'm not married yet. And, and although I work with a lot of couples, my boyfriend and I aren't married yet. So, but we talk about money from day one on, no, I should say day two, our our meet and greet, we didn't talk about money, but our first date, I had to tell him one, I own my own business. My income fluctuates. So I don't always act the same each month. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, <laughs> I know. So you need to know that about me, whether we're going to be in this for a long time, or we're just going to go on six dates. You need to know that some days I'm going to be tighter and, and kind of like you said with your husband, are you like, let's share a side salad. And so the conversation that we had was, it was more about me. So I feel like if you are open to sharing, like, this is how I feel about money. This is my money personality. And sometimes taking the money mentality quiz can be a way to have that money conversation and just make it jokey. Don't make it like serious. Just like, Hey, I just took this money quiz. Take it too. Here you go. Text them the link and then let them take the quiz. And it's really a fun quiz. It's not anything too serious and overwhelming. It's like 10 questions. And so then you can have a conversation about that. Or like I said, just bring up like, hey, sometimes I'm a lot tighter around money around this time. So I might expect you to pay for a date. Also, I think it's important to talk about your values around dating. My dad is a person that would take everybody out and he pays. So it's kind of stuck in my programming that I'm supposed to get treated. <laughs> so, yeah, totally. Yeah. So now that I talked about our first day in our meet and greet on the meet and greet, we only thought we were meeting for coffee, but we ended up talking for six hours. So we went to three different places. So the first he paid for the coffee and the second place he paid for the dinner, but then we went for drinks. And I was like, you know what? This guy just paid for coffee and drinks a uh, coffee and dinner when he only thought he was paying for coffee. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the drinks because that's just who I am as a person. We didn't have that conversation. It's just how I handled it. The next time we went out, we had that conversation. And I told him I did that because we didn't have a conversation about it. So I felt like, let me do my part. And now that we can have a conversation about it, I do want to tell you that there are times when I don't want to look at my purse. Like I just want to go out and you handle everything. I, well, here's what's really cool about that is it's transparency and vulnerability. 
Yes. And it's about sharing yourself and what's important for you. I have another client who's dating someone for a while and um, it didn't work out for a lot of different values that were different. But in the end, like that was one thing where he wasn't generous and he and they never talk, they never really talked about it directly. So I think the most important thing is like, Know who you are. Know your money personality. By the way, link to the quiz in the show notes. Um, and then have those conversations just like you would around like, do you want to have kids? Or, mm-hmm. you know, do you see yourself re- retiring in a city or the or the country? I mean, it's really just, it's 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 not like a taboo topic, right? Because it can't yeah. be. I love and that. So what you need to know is how possible is growth. Okay. So let me see how I can say that better. So you're talking to a person, if they're closed minded, closed minded, everything you say, they're like, Nope, not doing that. Nope. Can't explain. Nope. I'm, nope. 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 It's just shutting down, shutting down, shutting down. Then that person, no matter what, whether they have money or not, whether they're ambitious, whether they're successful, that's going to be a tough relationship. Now, if the person doesn't have money yet, but you're like, I have some money management ideas, or I have some money growth ideas or some earning ideas. Would you be open to hearing them? And they're like, well, yeah, I hear them. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not really sure how to do that. No worries. You don't have to be know how to do it. I know how to do it. All you have to do is be open to like going on the journey with me. And if they're like, yeah, I'll go. Then that's the guy. And that's so huge because that's a value that, so again, in choosing those five values, like for a lot of our clients, when they really get down in doing this work, it's like openness, a growth mindset, willingness to learn becomes way more important than, you know, what they come in with, which is like, he has to earn six figures or more. He has to have this much money in in retirement, et cetera. Okay. Last question for this show. Um, Okay. (laughs) <laughs> what so what are some like really healthy yummy like communication strategies to really discuss money and and keep that healthy dialogue going regarding money so number 1 we already talked about learn your own money mentality because your relationship with money is the is going to be more important than knowing the other person's ideas about money so first know yourself around money and how you manage it and your emotions around money and then reconcile those. So understand that there's, you may have some work that you need to do before you go judging and pointing fingers and expecting somebody else to be all money, you know, perfect. So then second, you want to discover your idea of prosperity, be clear on what that is. And that goes into that whole money can buy happiness, because if you know your idea of prosperity, then when you get money, you can move towards it. You can because I have people get on the path to happiness because that's a journey. It's not like, oh, money, happiness, bam, done. It's it's a journey. (laughs) I love that. And so the next part of that is on that journey. You want to become a lifelong learner. So don't think that you know it all. Like, okay, no, a lifelong learner about yourself, a lifelong learner about your partner, a lifelong learner about money itself, because money shifts and changes. And as money shifts and changes, you want to be able to shift with it. There are new products, there are new services and just new ways of managing money. So you want to become a lifelong learner. I would say this, this is like an actionable tip. So have a money day at least once a month when you sit down and you look at your finances and decide what you're doing well, where your challenges are, maybe where you need to improve, um, where you like to, how are you navigating the money cycle? Basically, are you earning, growing, protecting, gifting, and enjoying money the way you would like to, and do that on your own first. And then do that once you become in a relationship, or if you're in a relationship already, then begin to do that with your partner, where you both have a money day together, where you sit down and look at your finances. And maybe this is advice for your friend, um, your client who is going into a relationship. So, ha- or have been in a relationship for a year, have them sit down and say, let's start having a money day yep. every month at least once a month. We'll sit down and we'll look at our finances. What are we doing well? What do, what are we not doing well? 
Um, what are your strengths? What are my strengths? Because that's super important that you don't necessarily have to have the same strengths. In fact, it's even better if you don't have the same strengths. So determine what the other person's strengths are, determine what your strengths are, and then delegate your challenges. Your challenges need to be delegated. So if neither one of you are good at something, like let's say paying bills, then automate that stuff. Automate it because the bank is good at it. They, they'll do it. Their, their systems work fine. Just use their system. Put systems in place so that you can delegate your challenges and lean on your strengths. That way you can get on the path to happiness, stay on the path to happiness and get to your true idea of prosperity. Now, here's the last one. And that is focus. What you focus on expands. Yeah. So focus on your plan. Fall in love with the plan, not that pair of shoes, not that car, not what the Joneses buy. Fall in love with your plan. And when you fall in love with your plan, that's what you focus on rather than focusing on the Joneses. Because if what you focus on expands, then and you're focused on what the Joneses have, then the Joneses are getting more, not you. So mm, that's, that's, that's huge. And here's the other thing. I have to ask you one last question. Because this is okay. a big one that I hear all the time. Because we talk about people who have leaned so far into work, you know, and they're trying to come back, right? Because they realize work won't love them back, <laughs> right? Um, and they're wanting to create a, a change in their in their love life. And I hear this all the time about investing in yourself, whether it's hiring a financial therapist, whether it's working with someone to help you find a love life or going back to the gym or whatever it is, right? So that you can bring that balance back. And you hear this people say like, I have a rule about debt. What's the difference? Do you, what do you think about like consumer debt versus investing in, you know, learning something or growing your business or growing your personal development? What do you say to those ladies? Because I feel like sometimes they're so... They have so many rules based on that mm. money paradigm, that personality, mm -hmm. that it keeps them stuck. Yeah. So I have a couple things. So some of that is trust. A lot of that is trust. It's it's like they need them to have all these things in place because they don't trust them. Society has told them or their mother told them or grandmother told them, you don't lean on a man or don't let a man. You, just all those programs around a man taking your money or he needs to take care of you and all of that. Right. right so, right. so in, in your programming, there's a bunch of distrust. So first, who do you distrust really? Is it the programming or this man? So learn that and then trust yourself because it's a lot easier to trust somebody else when you've learned to trust yourself, but don't be a fool, of course, because I can hear your listeners and I, I I know, I, I don't know what they're saying, but I can hear them saying, no, 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 no. You don't trust the man with your money and you don't put all your eggs in one basket and all of those things, right? I know what society has told you. So you can argue with me all day long. I encourage you to do it because if you argue with me, you're going to hear yourself say some of the things that you've heard me say are programs, not you. Those are programs not you. So step away from the distrust, find it in yourself. What is it that I'm really distrusting? The second thing is stop competing because a lot of this is about competing too. I'm going out here and getting this. He better have this too. Yeah. What, why is this a competition? We don't need to compete. We're teammates. Since when are teammates competing? Mm. When teammates compete, they lose. That's so deep. So... <laughs> So those two things is spe specifically. And then here's the last thing. When I hear women, especially because that's your audience, but when I hear women talk about this idea that he has to have this much and that and 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 how hard they're working. And to me, it is going back to them, their validation. And you talked about this earlier. Some of it is, you know how a man has a trophy wife, she's tall, she's pretty, she has long hair, whatever, whatever, whatever society says is pretty, right? So that's their trophy husband. Oh, that is, oh my. So their job or their income is their trophy husband. Yep. What do you do with that, Kanae? 
<laughs> <laughs> so that's the financial therapy. That's financial therapy because you've got to reconcile those emotions. So at first it was your job and you're like, oh, my job, my job. And that was my validation. And that was your husband at one point. And then you shifted and it was like, okay, now I'm going to go find this man, but he better have this and that, and he better buy me a big ring and we better have a big house because that's now how you're presenting to the world. I, I stepped away from my corporate job to to marry this guy because he's awesome and he has a, you know, a big income or a big bank account. And so what you have to really figure out is what's really important to you. Let's which, figure that out. Which goes back to the damn first thing we talked about, which is like, <laughs> like really looking at what your values are and what you really, truly desire, which is- yep. Absolutely. But it's hard to see that through all the programming and all the messages that society is putting out there. And if you can turn off the television, this is a tip. And I really, truly do tell my patients and my um, clients this. Turn off the television. Just turn it off for a little while. Stop getting those messages. Just tune out the messages for just 30 days. That's all I ask. It's a challenge that I have my clients do. Turn off the TV, turn off the radio. Now listen to podcasts, yeah. <laughs> radio, and just, just be for a minute and see what really truly brings you happiness. Now here's a, a I do this in my five minute activation. Um, I do something called five minute activation. And this is like a really quick tip to help you take out your bank account, your bank. I'm sorry. Take out your bank statement. Your bank statement will tell you everything. Highlight the things that in the last 90 days you bought that made you feel something. So go down the list, start highlighting them. And, and as they're, as you're highlighting them, if you're saying, Ooh, I'm so glad I bought that. Or if you're saying, what, what was this? What? I don't even remember. That did not make you happy. You don't even remember it. So highlight it. If it made you happy and see how many things are highlighted. Is that a word? Hi it is now. <laughs> we just made it up. Hashtag highlight. <laughs> and see how many things you do. So what's left on this list that you could just delete because it didn't bring you any happiness, any fulfillment. You don't even remember it. So just do that. Three bank statements, 90 days, highlight, go down. What is it that really brought you? Like you, you look at it right now today and you, it still warms your heart like it did the moment you saw it. That is something that truly brings you happy. It might be your gym membership. I do aerial aerial fitness and oh my God, I love it so much. It is so much fun. And that's a payment that makes me happy. It doesn't make me sad. There's some things that I do pay that I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get done with this. So yeah. That's, and about the day. That's I huge. Just to, I just want to say one thing really quickly. Okay. Uh, stay off of Amazon. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. Because it's like that damn one click thing and you're like, yeah. oh, nah. and then I think this is a great exercise. Me and my husband are doing it. Okay. Talk about debt. So the last thing about debt, there is healthy debt and no society makes you feel like if you've had debt, you're a horrible person. And that's just ridiculous. And it stresses you out. And let me tell you when my business closed, oh, I had some debt on a bunch of stuff that I was paying off. And one of the things that happened when I, I had a $15,000 business loan and they negotiated with me and said, okay, pay a hundred dollars a month. I pay a hundred dollars a month. And I did not let that stuff stress me, stress me out. I just kept, I put it on auto pay and I paid a hundred dollars a month. And it was like, whatever, when it gets paid off, it gets paid off. That was the amount we agreed on. They stopped the interest. As long as I paid back what I said I was paying back, that was it. So don't let the debt stress you out. It can be paid off. It's not that big a deal. And just because society tells you that if you have debt, you're a bad person, you don't have to believe that. You're a good person. You're just a good person who didn't understand how to manage their money at one point. And as you learn how to manage your money, you can decide when it's best to take on debt. Because let me tell you, 0% financing is awesome. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> And people get upset about it. They're like, what? I don't want to owe anybody anything. Honey, you owe somebody. You owe the electricity company. You owe the gas company. You owe everybody. You Soon they'll be charging for air. And you owe them. <laughs> it's like we always owe somebody. We don't live in a society where you don't owe anybody. You just have to decide who you want to owe and be okay with that. That's, I love that. Okay, that's the mic drop. That's amazing. 
Um, this you're coming back for sure. Okay. And okay. I don't know where you live, but when I visit, we're hanging out. Um, and I just I really appreciate this. This is, I think, honestly, like for 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 today's woman, like it sounds so cheesy, but strong, modern, successful woman, like there is no paradigm around money and men. And there's just so many nuggets in here, ladies. So go to Kanae's website and check it out. Take the quiz. I'm taking it today. Uh, I will report back next time we speak. And um, any last sort of like tip from your heart? Hmm. I love that. So my heart is saying really focus on peace. So peace is my priority. That's something you'll hear me say. It's two things you'll hear me say. Peace is my priority and grow with the flow. I think a lot of times we're forcing, we're fighting against the universe and it's like, just stop fighting, stop forcing, stop pushing and just grow with the flow and let peace be your priority. Mm, I love that. And to that note, I will end by saying, as I always do every episode, and date with some damn dignity. All right, ladies, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye.